I want to talk once again about our favorite guy, Oliver Anthony, who is for some reason not going away. It's just never happening. Uh, turns out he's woke. Okay, folks, the 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 right wing guy that they were uh, astroturfing is not so right after all. Uh, turns out he's woke. Okay, he did it again. He's just a libertarian. Yeah, I don't really care about where he's coming from. Huh. Anyway, uh, here it is. Uh, he, he, he came out of the gate swinging. And, uh, if there is anything for me to address at all with you, it's that, you know, it's the one thing that has bothered me is seeing people wrap politics up into this. I'm disappointed to see, like, it's aggravating seeing people on conservative news try to identify with me like I'm one of them. It's aggravating seeing certain musicians and politicians act like we're buddies and, and act like we're fighting the same struggle here, like that we're trying to present the same message. Oliver is a chatter here for your information. Didn't he talk to uh, Midwestern Marx or something? He, he might have at some point. Probably not anymore. <laughs> Probably not anymore. I keep calling him a fat ginger. <laughs> He's not a leftist, guys. Come on. No one, no one who's like a fucking actual person. Absolutely zero people who are an, who are actually fucking Marx in any meaningful capacity are talking about how fucked up it is that these guys these uh wealthy politicians on both sides are giving welfare to fat people okay that's it you know I've, I've had a lot of people reach out to me and i've tried to be polite to everybody and i've talked to hundreds of people the last two weeks it seems like certain people want to just ride the attention of this song to maybe make them their own selves relevant and that's aggravating as hell the other thing that i find aggravating is well you know, like, it was funny seeing my song in the, it was fun, it was funny seeing it at the presidential debate. Because it's like, I wrote that song about those people, you know? So for them to have to sit there and listen to that, uh, that. The only thing, the only thing that I would ever fucking go back on is if he was like, listen, brother, I'm not a very good singer myself. And I just thought it would be a good rhyme. That is the only way. Then I'd be like, okay, maybe maybe he's not a fucking total shithead. And that's the reason why he said it. There's a major reason his song fell into that space, though. Well, I I never, like, uh, played along with the conspiracies of people being like, Richmond is confederate or whatever. Like, him being, like, uh, secretly dog whistling or anything. Okay, so is he a no-labels guy? He doesn't like Republicans, but also hates fictional welfare recipients? Did we need one of those, truly? My moderate friends are actually fans of this dude, oof. I mean, it seems he unintentionally said disregard the Epstein investigation. Yeah, he was like, politicians is stop looking out for minors, which can read as like pro Jeffrey Epstein, kind of. <laughs> but whatever. He's just not a very good lyricist, it seems. Where is it? Where the fuck? Yeah, American centrism is awesome, dude. Let me see. Uh, what's, his, what's his account, chat? What is his account? Is it Oliver Anthony or something? Oliver Anthony Music? Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you, part two. This is the one. Well, hey there. It's August 25th, 2023. A lot's changed since the last time I sat here and spoke to you. My friends and family. I will say one thing. The reason why I cover the reason why I'm covering this is not because it's always funny when like the right don't do their due diligence and then end up propping up a guy who's like, no, I actually hate you guys. What the fuck are you doing? But the real reason why I wanted to cover it, and this is going to come across like I'm fucking defending him. I'm not. But this morning, I had an aneurysm. Okay? Why did I have an aneurysm? Because just like I always do, I listen to NPR in the mornings. And let me tell you something. Okay? This morning's NPR fuckfest was particularly mind-numbing. Up first, with NPR covered three issues. Three biggest issues of the day. Okay? The first issue was Trump's busy week which is fine, I'm talking about the mugshot and whatnot. The second issue that they covered was hit songs, extreme themes, where they brought in an extremism specialist and they went fucking insane mode, okay? Like, I want to separate my personal criticisms and me dunking on this guy, okay? With what the fuck the, the liberals are saying about it. I despise when people look at a situation like this and go guys this is this is like really gonna galvanize this is really gonna galvanize the fucking uh racist because uh this song i mean the song that he came out with was like too is so scary 
is so scary, guys. It's like, what the fuck are you guys saying? Are you doing, like the NPR people that, the NPR people that made this attempt to cover this uh, song, what? Two days of watching you and it's super obvious how much of a grifter you are. Nothing about you is liberal or bipartisan. How dense is your audience? Richmond, North of Richmond, Washington, D.C. Have you dorks seen a map? Wait, what? I love that we hit the whammy where this guy is like in agreement with me, but he's like refusing to hear the words that are coming out of my mouth. First of all, you nailed it. I am not liberal, nor am I bipartisan. I've never said that I'm bipartisan. If, if anything, I hate both parties almost equally. I've also never said I'm a liberal. What the fuck? Nah, you just aren't smart enough to realize how hard you grift. So... I'm simultaneously like the best grifter because I've been able to cultivate this audience, but also very dumb. And I don't even realize I'm grifting. Wouldn't that mean that I'm not grifting then? I'm just like genuinely just a dumb guy who uh, is being honest about his perspective. It's a cult, not an audience. Okay. I like this guy. We're going to keep this one. This is a good pet. Thank you. But at least he like figured out that I'm not a liberal. So that's good. You 100% ban for opposing view. Oh, this is the ban uh, for opposing viewpoints guy. He's back, but thank you. You're right. You've nailed some of the things. I am, of course, biased. I, unlike many other people in the media, recognize that I am biased. And as a matter of fact, spend a lot of time talking about how it's impossible for you to avoid your biases. But it's not impossible to avoid the top of the hour ad break. Everyone's biased. The difference between me... And someone in mainstream media, for example, is that I immediately recognize it. I don't tell you that this is like, you know, uh, objective uh, reporting. I mean, I it's truthful reporting, but it's certainly my perspective. It's impossible to have reporting that is devoid of any kind of perspective. You can lie by omission, for example. Anyway, ultimately, oh, before I continue, uh, let me run the top of the hour uh, ad break. Did you guys not have mass media in high school? No, many Americans don't even have high school anymore, okay? Opposing viewpoints most of the time just means racism. Yes. Contractual obligation equals proof of grift. Also true. A lot of people who think they are unbiased or think that they are they're truly objective are people who are just basically repeating whatever they've heard. I penetrated the chatter matrix and planted my seed deep in Hassan's brain. Oh, stupid man. A lot of times I ban people like this because they just stop being entertaining when they get so like... Uh, when they, when they generate a, a feeling of self-importance that does not match their output. There's a lot of like funny, trolly, and sometimes like actually funny and interesting conservatives in here. But the moment that they get the spotlight, they don't immediately flip and think like, I'm the most important person in this room. They just kind of keep, they just kind of keep at it. You know what I mean? Whenever I see stuff like this, uh, that, that uh, it truly is just, you know, truly stupid. I mean, much, much stupider than uh, the original couple takes. Like these are these are funny, okay? These are these are arguable points. But when you start talking about this, like you're a fucking anime villain, it's like, no, you're not. You know what I mean? You're not an anime villain. You're a fucking loser in the chat. Remember that. You're a fucking loser who's in the chat of another loser, myself, just chatting it up. You know what I mean? We're both in it together. We're both losers cope okay he's just not okay all right we're we'll keep him around but maybe he'll get back to maybe he'll get back to being entertaining and interesting uh when it's not just about uh how sick he is all right you've asked me how i'm doing everybody is wondering if i'm uh if i've lost my sanity yet and i'm surprisingly calm and at peace i've i don't even know what to say but i feel thankful to be given this opportunity you know the music side is exciting and all the billboard, iTunes, charts, and all that crap. That's great. But uh, what's the exciting part has been the conversations I've had with people. Yeah, I was losing my mind. NPR was literally like, this guy is like promoting extremism. Okay? Like, I don't know his other songs, but the one I listen to is just like regular old, basic ass, you know, Republican uh, uh, takes that just shit on welfare. After, uh, like identifying a problem with our politicians and then turning around and then shitting on welfare. Like that's the worst thing they've done. Okay. So turning that around and being like, this is promoting extremism, like makes me fucking lose my mind. Are you just trying to give a gift to the right? Cause Fox news is going to run with that now. 
And then this guy's in the fucking discourse for another week. It's just so annoying. You know Fox News is going to cut like a ton of videos on it. And I'll be honest with you, they should because it's so fucking delusional. The rise of Oliver Anthony in Richmond, north of Richmond. I don't understand. I do not understand how you look at this and go, oh, let's bring in the extremism experts. The left's overreaction to this guy is pushing away a ton of working class Dems and cons who this song resonates with missed opportunity for the left. No, man. This is gone. It's bye-bye, okay? This is, a, this is just a, a, a fucking blip on the radar. What the fuck do you mean? No, it isn't. You guys are greatly overemphasizing shit that you see on fucking Twitter and shit that you see in media. Like, you're forgetting how uh, the, the uh, interest cycle operates. What the fuck do you mean? Yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to make a campaign on, on uh, you know, aligning with this guy by really winning over a lot of hardworking right-wingers. Like, shut the fuck up, dude. It's just a song. It's just a song. That is no different. What you're saying right there is no different than the care lording that NPR is doing. It's just on the other side of the equation. Do you get it? <laughs> See? Here's a troll I don't ban ever because he's great. This guy was the next Michael Jackson if you didn't call him fat. It's easier to say it's bad because of extremism, identity analysis, rather than welfare class analysis because libs and cons agree on welfare reform other than social security. Yeah. Yet NPR loves this album. Very good. Mogwai, I love you. I'm going to blow up your school. What? So, I mean, as a chance to highlight the good and educated on the bad, not short si or short-sightedness of class consciousness. First of all, people literally were up my asshole for making fun of this guy in the lightest ways possible. Okay. Because I didn't immediately dick ride him into oblivion and say he's like the, the savior of the working class. Okay? So, like, it's not like I was saying this is a genuine threat. I just simply said this is classic dumbass, like, uh, welfare reform asking uh, silliness. And many people on the left, on Twitter especially, did the same thing. They just clowned on him. It's okay, guys. You can clown on people that are making music that especially uh, the right wing is is celebrating as though this is like some some really fucking bold truths that everyone is too afraid to highlight or some shit okay do you understand this is song this song in and of itself is not about fucking class consciousness he's talking about like you know politicians looking out for pedophiles okay and like defending pedophiles like jeffrey epstein which hillary clinton and bill clinton are friends of right and then he's in the next bar talking about fucking welfare reform, which Bill Clinton did. So which is it? Bill Clinton can be best friends with a, 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 a pedophile as long as he gives us welfare reform. Is that what you're saying? This Friday is devolving into a cry day. If you heard my analysis of this song and me clowning on him, you know that it wasn't like, oh, this guy presents a danger or whatever. It was just like, here's another song. It's being astroturfed by the right. And there's a very silly, hey, Chapo Trap House. Thank you for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. I was just like incredibly fucking, it is incredibly silly to take this uh, as seriously as anyone has, okay? Which I refuse to do so. People. I got to pee the while this I've plays. Just in a couple weeks. About the human spirit and, and, and about all sorts of other things, the music industry and, and how, how dirty everything is. Like, it's, it's worse than you think. So I don't know what the future looks like for me. I'm not really too concerned about the future. I'm living in the present and I'm, I just have to have, I just have to have the discernment to make the right decisions from here on out. Because uh, I think about that guy who was sitting here a few weeks ago talking to you and the most important thing and the most important thing to me is not leaving him behind. I don't want to go on some roller coaster ride and come off a different person. If there is anything for me to address at all with you, it's that, you know, it's the one thing that has bothered me is seeing people wrap politics up into this. I'm disappointed to see, like, it's aggravating seeing people on conservative news try to identify with me like I'm one of them. It's aggravating seeing certain musicians and politicians act like we're buddies and, and act like we're fighting the same struggle here, like that we're trying to present the same message. You know, I've, I've had a lot of people reach out to me and I've tried to be polite to everybody and I've talked to hundreds of people the last two weeks. But it seems like certain people want to just ride the attention of this song to maybe make them their own selves relevant and that's aggravating as hell. The other thing that I find aggravating is, well, you know, like, it was funny seeing my song in the, 
It was fun. It was funny seeing it at the presidential debate because it's like I wrote that song about those people, you know. <laughs> so for the ironic is I literally said that by the way. Well, when we were watching the presidential debate, my first reaction was like, "Motherfucker, why are you guys responding to this? This is about you." Them to have to sit there and listen to that, uh, that cracks me up. But it was funny kind of seeing the response to it. Like that song has nothing to do with Joe Biden, you know. It's a lot bigger than Joe Biden. That song was written about the people on the on that stage and a lot more too, not just them, but but definitely them. It's cool seeing some of my other music come out because people are, I guess, starting to appreciate and understand what it is I'm really trying to say. It's hard to get a message out about about your political ideology or your belief about the world in three minutes and some change. But I hate I do hate to see that song being weaponized. Like I see I see the right trying to characterize me as one of their own. And I see the left trying to um, trying to discredit me, I guess in retaliation. Uh, that shit's got to stop. If you watch the response videos on YouTube to the song, it's not conservative people responding to the song. It's not even necessarily Americans responding to the song. I don't know that I've seen anything get such positive response from such a diverse group of people. And I'm sorry, dude. I just don't think that this is like a, a, a John like a genre defining like a like a world changing uh work of art he's fully talking about you no he's not he's talking about everyone else and myself included probably chill so he isn't right wing then yeah listen all i want to know is what the fuck he's talking about with the fudge rounds okay there is something interesting about the fact that he never actually there is something about the fact that he actually rarely ever posted the fudge rounds part i don't know why but it's like, fudge rounds are fairly fucking good. They're like the chocolate version of oatmeal cream pies. I've never had it. I think that terrifies the people that I sing about in that song. And they've done everything they can the last two weeks to make me look like a fool, to spin my words, to try to stick me in a political bucket. And they can keep trying, but I'm just going to keep on writing. And I've got a lot of words to put down on paper, and I've got, I've got a lot of songs to put to chords. And uh, I don't know what my music career is going to look like. I don't know how many shows I'm going to do and how many tours I'm going to put on, but I am going to stay true to Why the North of Richmond line if there isn't a Confederate sympathy? Because rich man of Richmond rhymes, dude. I was like, he's just, he's just fucking saying like Washington, D.C. Come on. That part was very clear from the jump. What was Matt Walsh's like, what was Matt Walsh's first like reaction to it? Does anyone have that? I'm trying to find it right now and I can't. I'm looking for it. You honestly don't think that there were Confederate dog whistles in there? We're not buying this walk back, right? I mean, the lyrics objectively are Confederate dog whistles. Did he not write the song or something? What Confederate dog whistles? He's saying rich man north of Richmond as, as like fucking politicians. Like that, that part makes sense. This is the protest song of our generation. Dude, this is objectively the lamest thing you could say. I love this. Didn't he love it? Yeah, Matt Walsh loved it. Where the fuck is the original one? Not the one where he says, I like this. What? No, not this one either. The OG one. No, the OG Matt Walsh one was like, this song speaks to the heart of like, uh, you know, what people believe in. Oh, the main reason this song resonates is so many people isn't political. This is what I was looking for. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to show you guys something. Okay. I'm going to show you a song that truly resonates with the American population in a way, in a raw poetic format okay and an authentic raw and poetic format i need you to understand hold on i'm gonna tweet it out first okay here it is guys was this misinformation oliver anthony 9 11 anti-semitic jewish conspiracy no i do believe that i'm sure that he uh yeah no that was his playlist for sure no he's this guy is just it's like fucking dumb hog dude what do you mean okay here it is ladies and gentlemen here's here here's the real 
Here is the real truth of the matter. I dream about American politics tonight. Have I got a song for you? It's in the company of strangers that I can stand up to the man. Cause I can campaign against the problems that I can see from where I stand. I'm never gonna make you a believer, but I can help you understand. I'm never gonna help you solve your problems, but I can help you take a stand. Cause I am your friend. Rectangular. Oh, I'm fuck. That's it. That's the truth. The main reason this song resonates with so many people isn't political. It's because the song is raw and authentic. We are suffocated by artificiality. Oh God, please stop. Oh God, Hassan has terrible taste in music. There's no fucking shot this guy's think, thinking I'm being serious, right? It's over. Satire is dead. Jokes are dead. Twitter is fucking dead. I am dead. We're all dead. We're in fucking purgatory. People literally constantly have to ask, uh, is, this a, is this a joke all the time? Like, like, this is what I'm making a mockery of. I can't, oh, fuck, I hate my life. I, I do, I actually hate my life. I hate, I hate this. What is happening? What the fuck's going on? What is happening? Why, why is it like this? What is going on? Do I have to run the song again for you to understand the joke? Do you want to have a bad dream about American politics tonight? Have I got a song for you? It's in the company of strangers that I can stand up to the man Cause I can campaign against the problems that I can see from where I stand I'm never gonna make you a believer, but I can help you understand I'm never gonna help you solve your problems, but I can help you take a stand Cause I am your friend The worst thing that could have happened here is if people started actually bopping to this unironically and being like, yeah, this guy's actually saying some good shit. We need more men that look like rodents in the music industry. This is why representation matters. And Gorbachev is in here. Finally, people are joking. Oh my God. Anyway, I personally think this is a banger of a fucking meme, but I guess uh, maybe a little too much for, for, the, for some of the chatters. Anyway, let's get back to Oliver Anthony now that we made some jokes. My word. I'm... I'm going to write, I'm going to write, produce, and distribute authentic music that represents people and not politics. I do feel compelled to address something. Um, since I have addressed the conservatives, I do need to address the left as well. Because they're sending a message out that that, that initial song that sort of shot me up the radar, Richmond North of Richmond, is, is an attack against the poor. If you listen to my other music, it's obvious that all of my songs that reference class defend the poor. Uh, Dog on it's a good example of that. Needles in the street, folks hardly surviving on sidewalks next to highways full of cars self-driving. The poor keep hurting and the rich keep thriving. It's like, that's what I like to sing about. And you know, the English language is interpretive. And so I do understand like, there may be some people who, who misunderstood my words in Richmond, North of Richmond. But I've gotta be clear that my message, like with any of my songs, it references the inefficiencies of the government. So here's what his uh, answer was to Oliver Anthony talking about the fudge rounds. Here, this is... Our government likes to throw money and problems without conceptualizing real solutions that connect to the individuals involved. The lyrics contrast that some are left without any and others are only left with the option of living on junk food. Meanwhile, our farming industry has been corporatized and sold out. Food is entirely too expensive, especially in a nation with abundant farmland. In politics, it's all about keeping people who are dependent, dependent. Yep. Okay, dude. I want to know what the... I do think it's a little generous. That is absolutely not what he meant. I mean, I don't know why he would uh, turn heel after getting this much praise from the right and then be like, oh, maybe, I, maybe people misunderstood the thing that I was trying to say. The only thing I would say in this situation is if he admits that he's just like not the best lyricist, which is why he did the fudge round thing. Lib dub retcon, I'll take it. Yeah, I don't know why, uh, why he would just like fuck up the bag this way. You know what I mean? He can't make up his mind on the line. Because of the politicians within it that are engulfed in bribes and extortion. And, you know, the words say that there's people on the street with nothing to eat in the obese milk and welfare. That references a news article I read earlier this summer that adolescent kids in Richmond are missing meals over the summer. Brother, what? 
You said the obese are milking welfare. Like, what the fuck do you mean? Why would anybody interpret that in any other direction? It's called having morals. You should try it sometime. All of our Anthony heads in the chat are going nutty with it. They're like, Hassan, we've always known you've been a fucking grifter. This guy's a Maoist third world is. He's doing a people's protract protracted people's war, liberating the Appalachian uh, region. Okay, and you, on the other hand, are out here being a fucking phony in your goddamn mansion, you fucking rich piece of shit. Every part of his fucking lyrics revolves around shitting on welfare and demanding austerity. You're mad he spoke on food deserts and you two champagne socials do the same. I do think it's, let me tell you something. I do think it's interesting. This actually makes him a more interesting person. Why? Because why is a guy who got elevated by the right, AstroTurf by the right, into fucking getting a number one Billboard chart song, turning heel immediately as soon as the spotlight is on him and being like, no, 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 you guys don't understand. I don't fuck with any of this shit because he has morals. Okay, but then why did he fucking write the song like that originally? Why did he get a fucking Rumble account? It, it makes him a unique person for sure. Because like, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. He could have just leaned into it and kept it going. If he was like the, uh, the type of dude who just straight up is a right wing idiot. Okay. The fact that the fact that he is like, no, actually I'm not like that. Diversity is our strength. And also that, uh, you know, fuck these guys who think that like, uh, you know, I'm on their side chat. You can't say him. Holy fuck. Y'all are so gullible. I mean, I don't think there is any saving. I think, I think it's an interesting, I think it's an interesting perspective. Maybe he is truly like a fucking leftist dude. Who knows? Maybe. And maybe he is like a class conscious guy. But it's wild that it's wild that you guys are saying he's a coward and that's why he's backtracking. He don't need to backtrack. He needs the fucking front track. Okay. In his shoes, if he legitimately is like a right wing guy, then he's all he needs to do is make up another fucking song where he says like you should kill trans people and then boom. You know what I mean? What the fuck are you talking about? All he needs to do is just lean in to the right and the right will cherish him and keep trying to elevate him back again every time he drops a new album. He's going to make so much more money pretending not to be a Republican. I think you guys are actually unironically delusional if you think that. He would farm the right. He's going to make so much money pretending not to be a Republican from the right. Wait, what do you mean? Not leaning into it is going to make him so much more money from the right? No, 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 you're wrong. It's a wider audience. Dude, 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 dude. We're talking about country music. What are you saying? Think about the most popular country musician and his banger, Jason Aldean. Try that in a small town, okay? Versus like leftist country musicians and, and how popular they are. Who's making more money in your minds? What are you guys talking about? He already hit the fucking high. As, he already hit the high note. He already literally tapped in to the collective consciousness of the right. All he needed to do was keep, if he is like genuinely a right-wing guy, that's all he needed to do. What leftist country singers? There are some. Because their parents can't afford to feed them and they're not in school to eat cafeteria. Tyler Childers is insanely popular and leftist. Sure. But for every Tyler Childers, there's like a, a ton of, of right-wing weirdos. And meanwhile, I think like 30 or 40% of the food bought with welfare or EBT money is is in a classification of like snack food and soda. I think 10% spent on soda and I want to say like 20 or 30% spent on junk food. And that's not the fault of those people. Welfare only makes up a, a small percentage of our budget. You know, we can we can fuel a proxy war in a foreign land, but we can't take care of our own. That's all the song's trying to say. Yeah, that's not what those lyrics were. Come on, man. What the fuck? Just say you're a bad lyricist and move on. You know what I mean? The less direct he is with his politics, the more he can worm around the media. Liberals would be confused and want to ask him more. Republicans would make him look like an innocent artist being bullied by liberals. I don't think this guy is that smart. I don't think he's like smart enough to confuse. Like, I don't think he's trying to. I don't think this dude is legitimately like, ooh, I'm going to sneakily with my first hit. Say some like really basic right wing shit only to double down on uh, instead of doubling down on it only to back away from it and then and then like take a pr hit from the right he's just fucking up the bag it's just saying that the government takes people who are needy dependent and makes them needy independent i think you're just being uncharitable and at some no i'm being significantly more charitable to him than uh than chad is by saying i think his 
his his take here might be genuine. Like I don't think this is like a like an insidious, secret, cynical uh, uh, retriangulation of his message. That's why I believe the easier argument is he just thought that it was bars. You know what I mean? <coughs> he just thought it was fucking bars, and now like he was just hitting like very basic notes that he he probably thought that he thought would bang which they did. And then now he's like, no, no, no. There's a deeper meaning behind it. He's just a normal Missouri style individual. When I was living in Missouri, this was basically every dude I met. Why is it so hard to believe that this guy is sincerely politically incoherent? Well, no, that's what I'm saying. What do you mean? I'm saying he's politically incoherent. At some point I will dissect all my lyrics of all my songs. If that's what I need to do. I mean, 30 some million people understood what I was saying. Would you but have him on the broadcast? Yeah, I would have him on the broadcast. To, uh, derail the train, you know, to try to send out false narratives. And I'm sure there'll be more of that to come. I'm not gonna lie. This this video paired up with the uh, this video paired up with the uh, uh, the the NPR coverage on him has changed my mind about his uh, perspective a little bit. I just thought he was like a regular, basic ass, uh, a dumbass chud who's just like, yeah, the the obese milk and welfare and the EBT people, they're the real problem. Like they need to, be, we need welfare reform, but. I don't think that he is, um, I don't think that he's like being cynical because if he was cynical and if he was doing this, he, he didn't need to re-triangulate his message at all. He could have very easily turned around and, and uh, continued making like light populist messages, like subtle economic populist messages uh, with, uh, with a little bit of xenophobia attached to it. Like, oh, you're not helping, you're not helping our veterans that are homeless on the street because you're too busy helping, uh, you know. Uh, those who want to invade our country again. And then every single person on the right would be like, this is bars again. He did it again. This guy's the best. You know what I mean? When did he say that? He never said that. I'm saying he could say that in his next song and keep riding the fucking wave. I think he's trying to say that EBC should be better funded so people can spend it on healthy food instead of having to ration it out across junk food. But I don't know. This is what no theory does to a motherfucker. Doesn't seem like an evil guy though. You were very uncharitable to him when you first listened, but now you want to be charitable? <laughs> Shut the fuck up, stupid. Classic fucking chatter. Trying to hit it from both angles. He's the type of person with opposing views you can convince and find common ground with. He's the certain percentage that you mention. I'm sorry, there's no way to interpret those lyrics that isn't anti-welfare. Let's be fucking real. Which is why I said, maybe he's just not like, maybe he didn't think it through or something, okay? Maybe he just has incoherent politics and someone fucking genuinely explained to him that his line was like, uh, implementing austerity measures uh, for no particular, no discernible reason. And he was like, well, you know, that's not what I meant. I don't want that. And now he just uh, is, is uh, backing away from it. My point is this. I'm a media guy, okay? And as a media guy, the thing I look at is in his shoes, if I have the morality of a right winger, if I have the ideology of a right winger, there is no way in hell I'm fucking backing away from that. Just going to say it, certain white leftists will bend over backwards when it comes to romanticizing poor white working class shows. Absolutely. I think people really, really hyper-focus on the aesthetics. And it is yet another uh, aspect of, of living in the United States of America in a, in a uh, late-stage capitalist dystopian world where like you have no connection to class consciousness, so you just only hyper-focus on the optics because that's what liberals do. It's liberalism. What are they saying? Please do not stop. Keep preaching. I played a couple of your songs with my 82-year-old parents. You're, you well articulated what the common people think. Your music strikes a deep chord to many of us. Please, sir. I don't think any of them actually heard what he was saying in this video. Okay? Okay. I followed him. I'm going to DM him on Instagram. It's going to be irrelevant in two weeks to song. Move the fuck on. Lol. I mean, I do think so, but I don't give a shit. I mean, it's like, who cares? It's like... I think it'd be an interesting conversation. You talk so much shit about him, Lamau. Yeah, I did. It's driving. Also, I, I hope you guys understand something very important here, okay? Me talking shit about him is perfectly fucking valid for what his lyrics were. If he actually is a fucking left-wing guy who is deeply class conscious, he should understand that, okay? Suck my dick. I'm not going to fucking sit here and be like, wow, another guy who came out and was like, oh, it's the obese milking welfare. That's the real problem in American society. Uh, just because he said a bunch of fucking populist bullshit like, oh, man, rich men north of rich men, like, this is what they're doing. If, that's your, if that is your major point of contention with the rich men north of rich men, then, you know, it's fucking bullshit. Of course I'm going to shit on that. Also, like, 
there are plenty of people who went above and beyond being like, this guy's actually a secret fucking conservative op, a Confederate op, sorry, defending the Confederacy, blah, blah, blah. If this is truly what he meant, I would love to talk to him about it, and I would love to hear his perspective, his full perspective, and why he chose to use those lyrics, okay? That's it. Having people crazy to see the unity that's come from this, from all walks. This isn't a Republican and Democrat thing. This isn't even a, a, a United States thing. Like, this has been a global response. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Go on YouTube and watch all the response videos, you know? And don't shoot the messenger. Like, I'm a nobody. It's my belief that divine intervention has put me in this position in this point in time to get a message across, and that's all there is to it. Like, I'm nobody special. You know, I, I, I feel terrible almost that I've been put in this place because there, there are a lot of artists and musicians out there that are far more talented that have put in way more hours than me. Like, I don't deserve, I, I don't deserve to sit in the top five places on the iTunes charts. And the truth is I really could give a shit less about the iTunes charts. What I care about is connecting with people. What I care about is, I don't, I don't know what this country is going to look like in 10 or 20 years if things don't change. I don't know what this world's going to look like. And, like, something has to be done about it, you know? There's been too many people die. There's been too many people sacrifice everything they've had. People die before they even, before they're even 18, you know? Just to, for us to all sit here and just do the stupid shit it is that we do every day that keeps us all, all beat down and divided. Like, that's what I want to see stop. And I'm going to do everything I can. Left is unfortunately want to remain a subculture of purity, running away from popular things for a few lines unhealthy to build broader solidarity. Guys, there's no fucking broader solidarity happening with like one song, please. It's just, it's, for me, it's just uh, fascinating, okay? I'm fascinated the more I learn, the more I learn about a person who like literally fucking was doing classic conservative commentary, was at the top, okay, out of nowhere, out of nowhere, comes out of nowhere, is astroturfed by right-wingers, gets a fucking Rumble account, and and then turns around and is like, actually, all that shit is, uh, people are misunderstanding. I'm not even talking about them. Chatters who are this easily tricked should become adult Catholics. <laughs> Catholics. I mean, don't say that. They will. To influence that at all costs. Even if it does, uh, even if it does throw my world upside down, it's, it's well worth it. But for now, I'm hanging in there and I'm, I'm doing what I can. And, and I... I really appreciate everybody who's along for the ride. So there's a lot more to come, and I'm excited for it. And I, I'll see you on the next one. <laughs> to be fair, Catholicism is better than Protestantism at molesting. Oh, it's not, you don't get it. He used the Republican high notes to appeal to the Republican dark money lobby to get his shit out, and now he's lefty drip feeding on MAME to form popular front by uniting right wing working class and giving them class consciousness. Is that simple? Yeah, that's what he's doing. This guy is a based Pat Sock MAGA communist, I think. And he's doing it. He's actually doing it. Every single person is now joining uh, CPUSA. Everyone who was everyone who was on TPUSA is now on CPUSA. You know what I'm saying? Fucking hell yeah, baby. Hell yeah, brother. Anyway, I think this is genuinely interesting uh, because it doesn't. I usually have a decent smell test on shit like this. Okay, uh, I I usually have a decent smell test on this, uh, but. Him coming out and doing this goes entirely against what anyone else in his shoes would do. Unless there is like some legitimate perspective backing this kind of thing. It does come across very scripted. But there is not really too much more to gain in this situation. You have a lot more to gain if you just stay like apolitical and, and uh, you know, keep just saying right-wing shit. Because right-wing grifting does pay well. And a lot of people on the right... A lot of people on the right are, are desperate for any kind of fucking, any kind of artist. You know what I mean? So I'll, I'll you should reach out to him and have him on the broadcast. I did. Uh, I already reached out to him uh, just now. He has a playlist on his YouTube called Videos to Make Your Noggin Bigger. And one of them is a 9-11 Jewish conspiracy video. I don't think he's faking it. Yeah, there's also that aspect of it, which is, I don't know what the fuck's going on there. I think the problem is you put people into a box and think they all think the same way when your average person has wildly varying views that don't fit in a box. What is the number one thing that I talk about uh, with respect to American politics? The average American voter is a sea of contradictions. That is literally one of the more common things I say all the fucking time. I also say everyone's a liberal, but yeah. You will never fucking find, you will never in a million years find the average American who is not like super uh, well-read on this stuff, or even if they are super well-read, 
they're never going to they're never going to make sense two videos on the playlist about the dancing israelis after 9 11 oh, that's hilarious yeah that part that part doesn't even make me think he's like conservative he's just like a conspiracy broken uh brain broken possible far right uh, guy because like i don't think the average conservative believes that chatter because that still doesn't make sense with his fucking perspective on the welfare fudge round shit. Because the welfare fudge round guy is like a regular old conservative. Okay? A regular old conservative is not going, yeah, Jews did 9-11. I, I think you guys greatly overemphasize and, and assume that like everyone on the fucking far right is like, uh, you know. Like there's a difference between someone who is like ideologically close to fascism versus like your regular old uh, run-of-the-mill conservative who is very fucking racist in many instances, but is not like even completely aware of it. There is not a self-awareness that comes uh, with like being an ideological fascist. Anyway, anyway. One interesting thing about Richmond, Northern Richmond, is that the right that he rightly attacks the welfare state. Many conservatives think that it isn't popular to criticize entitlements, but in reality, blue-collar Americans are sick of having their money stolen in a probable system that functions as nothing more than a vote-buying scheme for Democrats. Go up to any guy at any bar in any blue-collar part of the country. Ask him what he thinks of entitlements, and he'll say exactly what Anthony says in that song. Yeah, those guys are dumbasses, number one. And number two, Matt Walsh, go up to any fucking guy in a blue-collar bar in any part of America and talk about their children's genitals, and you'll probably get your fucking ass beat, you freak. You fucking pervert. Shut the fuck up. I hate that, like, this guy is, is acting like he's the beating pulse of, of uh, you know... Heartland America. Anyway. Wait, what the fuck? I mean, this was a funny take from Felix saying, okay, so he's a no-labels guy. He doesn't like Republicans, but also hates fictional welfare recipients. Do we need one of those? Truly. I think it's as simple as he had a traumatic brain injury and then has been on the sauce for years by his own admission. How'd you turn that guy into a pervert, lol? Wait, Matt Walsh? Hello? Matt Walsh is a pervert. Are you serious? Are you new here? Matt Walsh is the biggest fucking pervert of all time. What the fuck do you mean? He can't shut the fuck up about children's genitals. Anyway, you were looking like a delirium tremens right now. What the fuck? Thank you. I'm now going to book the Fulton County photographer for my Christmas card. <laughs> because, Judge, and I say this with a unblemished record of heterosexuality. He looks good. And, and he looks hard. Listen, bro. Jesse Waters ain't wrong. He ain't wrong and he should say it. He's right. He did everything right and now I'm hard, okay? He looks hard and I'm hard.